Hello! Today we are going to learn how to export a seamless music loop to use in your game with two possible scenarios in mind. The first scenario is the simplest. Let's say that you have composed a track and you want it to loop from beginning to end. Here is our little loop. Before doing anything else, let's make a note of the BPM at which the track is set. Here it's 95 BPM. Let's also check the number of bars in our loop. Here we have 36 bars. Let's keep that in mind during the next steps. So, our goal here is to export this track from our DAW into an audio file, and we want that audio file to loop seamlessly, meaning that we don't want to hear any pops or clicks or any unnatural sound. To avoid this, we need to first understand what tails are. So what are tails? Let's imagine that you're singing in a cathedral. Even after you stop singing, you will still hear the echo of your voice on the walls of the cathedral, and it will take time to fade out. That's because sound exists within a specific space. And when you use effects such as reverb or delay on your instruments in your DAW, they will also have tails. Meaning that even when you hit pause in your DAW, or when the MIDI information stops, you will still hear audio. Look at how long you can still hear it after the music ends in this loop. So you see that the green bar in our master track took a lot of time to fade out and that's because audio is still going on because of all the effects that we have on those tracks. This is very important because any incoherence in your tails will break the seamlessness of your loop. For example, if you export this track as is, it will sound very unnatural when it loops because those tails at the end of the loop will not be included in the beginning of your loop. Here I will export it as is to show you. Here I have imported my loop into the DAW. So first of all, I will remove the fades that Ableton puts automatically at the beginning and end of clips. And then I will show you if I loop it like this, which is what you will get if you just export your MIDI information as is, how it will sound. So you can hear that it sounds very unnatural and this is because those tails here that you can see at the end of the clip are not included in the loop. So how do we go around that? The way we do this is that we duplicate our loop to include the tails from the end of the loop into the beginning. So here I'm going to duplicate it. Then I will export it into audio. So now that you have your audio file, you can import it into a new project. This is when you need to remember the BPM and number of bars of your loop. So let's start with setting the correct BPM. For us it was 95. This ensures that the bars in the project match to what they were in the original project and so it allows you to know exactly where your second loop is. So we know that our first loop was 36 bars exactly and so the second loop should start exactly here. So what you need to do now is that you need to cut the audio file exactly where the second loop starts. Now let's delete the first loop. Let's remove any fades that our DAW might have added automatically to the clip. And now let's listen to how the loop sounds. So you can hear that it sounds much more natural than the example that we had earlier. And this is because all of the tails from the end of our loop are included in the beginning of the loop. And voila! Now you can simply export this audio file and hand it to your game developer or implement it yourself into your game as a seamless loop. So now for the second scenario. In this scenario, you only want specific sections of your track to loop. For example, here we have an introduction to our music and we only want the loop to go from this point to this point. If you use Game Maker, you will be able to use looping points to implement this specific audio into your game. But how do you export the audio file? First, let's again take note of the BPM and number of bars of our loop. Here we have again 95 BPM. Our introduction is 8 bars long and the actual loop is 36 bars long again, which means that it stops at bar 44. So once again, let's be mindful of tails. If we export the track as is, we will run into problems due to the fact that the tails from the introduction will bleed into the actual loop. So when your audio goes from this point to the beginning of your loop, it will sound unnatural because of the tails not matching. To solve this, let's again duplicate the looping zone. So this is where we actually want the audio to loop. Now let's export the audio. 
So I have imported this new audio file into a new project. Again, let's remove the fades that Ableton puts automatically at the beginning and end of clips. And let's remember to adjust the BPM and to check where our loop actually starts. So we remember that our loop started at bar 45. So this is what we actually want to loop. Our introduction is eight bars long, so it is here. And this is the first pass of the loop. So your audio will go through all of this once and then we'll loop through this section. So let's check that it is actually seamless. Sounds good to me. And this is because we have included the correct tells in the loop and it sounds seamless. If you want to learn how to implement loops into GameMaker, we've got you covered with this video. And if you want to learn how to make the music displayed in this video, you can check out this tutorial on how to make synthwave music for your game. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave any questions you may have in the comments below.